But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speak of what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all of this did not Job sin with his lips. With all sayings as a basis of what God wants me to say to you, let us pray. Dear God, our Father, we are conscious of the responsibility that hangs upon us right now. We pray that you'll lose our tongue and eliminate our minds of a holy ocean. And dear God, we pray in Jesus' name that you'll call us, if it were, back him over this place. Make our demonic spirit move back out and give God free reins of the whole business. That the Holy Spirit shall do what He wants to do on these grounds and these days. Then, God, we pray in Jesus' name that you'll bless every preacher that's here, bless every church that's represented here. May these days be days that will challenge and move us and call us and the things you want us to do. And we'll be grateful to you, Father, because it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk to you about demon-infested America. We have here a very interesting story. The sons of God, not the sons of the devil, but the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And God said to Satan, what are you doing here? He said, going to and fro, walking up and down in the land, seeking, of course, whom he might devour, because the devil's going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil's in the devouring business. He's not whom he can devour and destroy and defeat and discourage and mess up. He's in that business. And then, in the second chapter, it says that the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord to worship, and Satan presented himself before the Lord. And God said, What are you doing here, Satan? Said, From going to and fro, walking up and down in the land. He's caught seeking whom he could devour. And God said, well, if you consider the servant Job, you ask for somebody, consider him, will you? And he said, oh, yes, I've considered him. But you blessed him. Has no other man's father ever been blessed? Look at all of the property. Look at all of the family. Look at all of the cattle and sheep. All of those things you blessed him with. Who wouldn't serve you with all of that? Being caught out of bond, he's just serving you for what you can get out of him. God says you can take it all away from him, he's still serving. The devil says, You got a head built around and I can't get through it. Thank God for the head. Do you remember how that God permitted the devil to went in and all Job had? All of his cattle, all of his sheep, all of his camels, all of his animals were killed. His servants were killed. Then the devil turned around and killed his family. And old Judge stood out there, rent his clothes, shaved his head, said, The Lord give him, the Lord take him. Blessed be the holy name of men. The devil come back and God said, What do you think about him now? He said he's still healthy. He figures he can make his wealth back and get a family can. Let me have it. Now I'm causing the curse you to your face. God said, all right, all of it's his, yours, except his life. If you leave his life alone, he's been entrusted to me. You talk about eternal security. That's one of the best verses. <laughs> Get everything he's got and get his coffin, but you don't get his life. That's mine. And you remember how then that he went out there as a result of it, he afflicted Job from the top of his head to the sole of his foot with boy sores, painful sores, feverish sores, 
and it became rough all over. It had so many boils, so many sores, it couldn't sit out on nothing solid. It went out and sit out on the soft pile of ashes and got a pot to and scrape the most cores out of the soil. The devil got in Joe's wife and she slipped up and said, All of this happened to us. You still wait in God. Why don't you curse God and die and get it over with? Joe so said, You talk like a fool. Amen. 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 Then Joe Spring come and said, Joe, do you not realize what's going on? Your family's all dead. Your wife's against you. Everything's against you. You've lost everything you have, boy. He said, well, I don't know all about it, but one thing I know, my remains with him. <laughs> he hasn't told him yet. He hasn't gone out of business yet. I still have him. Amen. Regardless of what this world of devil's crowd do to us, brother, we still got him. Amen. And I'm going to put him out of business. Amen. In a world of confusion, folks don't know why they come from monkeys, baboons, or eggs or not. He said, I know from whence I come and where I go. I said, let me go with you then. I don't care nothing about going to the I've been going to him ever since. He knows where he's at, where he's going, and he'll know when he gets that. I'm staying with Jesus. And as a result, this friend said, I just curse God and die. Curse God and die. If a man dies, shall I live again? Huh. He said, I know stuff when you cut the tree down and get a little smell of water, it'll start to live again. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to live again and praise God. Yeah, oh God, you slay me. Why you slay me? I'm still saying with you. Come to church, I don't believe it. You might 
Let them be six feet to have enough love to go. Yeah. Right. Well, the weather's coming. If you mean God sent that way to keep you from going to church, I don't believe the word. Amen. So my friends, I want you to go to devil time. And he is going by a French the old lion is out of the chicken. Some of you remember a few years back, I preached to some of them. Lion has come out of his thicket. He's on the way to destroy the Gentiles. And I showed you how through the biblical years, the historical years, he's destroyed a nation that's forgot God. He don't have to destroy a nation. All he's got to do is get this nation to forget God. And God said if a nation forgets God, it shall perish. And all the old devil got to do is get us to forget God and sit down and watch us there and make God a liar. And God ain't going to lie to say, my heart. Amen. They can forsake the Lord to be cast off forever. Now the devil's a stronger believer in what God says than a lot of you are. He bleeds and trembles in the presence of God. That's more than some of you do. So as a result, my friends, he's just in this country now, the devil is an infiltrating into America. We are living in a demon infested America. Where's all your dope coming from? Where's all your sex progression coming from? Where's all the robbing and the murdering and the raping and the killing and the murdering of innocent babies and all of that? Where's that coming from, friends? It's not coming from God. I want to realize, my friends, the demons, my friends, just like geese or some migrating birds. So, you see, the geese leave the northern waters and fly to the Gulf Shore, down to the <laughs> Gulf, and then fly back when the weather changes. Birds migrate, fish migrate. But I want you to know demons are migrating. As they come to America, we are living in a demon and threats of America today. And as we face it, my friends, let's look at it. They migrate. Now you thought the people like Dr. Trump from this church is slip and a group of the old missionaries, and they'll tell you how infested the old heathen countries were with demons. And they give you some experiences they had with demons make no place run cold. And they talk about, we'll talk to you, more modern missionaries who are over there now. They're not having problems with demons that we're having. They come from over there and migrated over here and are hibernating in America. Brother, they come out. They moved in. Demonic forces have migrated into America to take this country because this is the last stronghold for God. You see, as a result, my friends, the Jews rejected Jesus, returned to the Gentiles. And now that the devil to get us to reject them, there's nobody else for him to turn to. You better think about it. So as a result, he's turned in all his shot. And they come and migrate into America. Listen to me. Some of the greatest gospel hymns. I'm not talking about these hip hop heel little things. I'm talking about real inspirational hymns that move people's hearts, stir people's souls, challenge people to look toward God, move their emotions, warm their hearts. Challenge them like there is something filled with blood. Amazing grace, how from a foundation near to the cross and near to the heart of God. Draw me near some of the great hymns, some of the greatest inspirational hymns that ever come to before your eyes and been put in your humans come from England. I mean the great soul stirring heart changing uh, powerful songs, hymns came from England, English writers produced them under the inspiration of God. And our very forefathers was moved in the heart with those hymns. Moved in their souls with those hymns. 
find to wear high heels like women, paint their face, and start to wear jewelry like women, and wear a hair. Medical science tells us, now I noticed in the medical magazine back in May of this year, that a lot of long hair wearing men and boys are beginning to have a white mucus from their breath. You won't be so much like a woman, God's going to let you give some milk. <laughs>
through the intellectual centers of the country, the devil's doing his work. Where does all of your sinful stuff start? In intellectual centers. All of the heresies start being taught in religious institutions. All the questionable things that question God and science and things of God start in the university. Where do all your sleeping start? University and college campus. Not like I'm from the grassroots parts of the country. But in the intellectual sense, which where they started sleeping. Going naked. A lot of psychologists said they're just a, trying to admit that this mother woman is full of demons. So, a lot of women, demon infested. So, as a result, you just watch the thing. Then God turns around and curses the slave. Then the intellectual sinners begin to try to tell us, tell your sons and daughters that we sprang from mercy. Who by whom? What they want to put it on the pole with innocent ones for? Why don't they bring us some snakes? <laughs> Snake was the most beautiful creature, the highest of the subtle of the field. Why didn't they get us out of the snake instead of the monkey? <laughs> I had one of those evolutions come to me the other day and said, I said, your creatures said, no, I'm an evolution. I said, what's that? He said, I believe in these ancestors. I said, Suze, I don't know about them because your mama's a bad woman, your papa is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Another <laughs> one of them tagged the hospital the other day, called for some men to come and give some blood. I said, could you get somebody to give me some blood? I said, no, go catch a bunch of monkeys and pump their blood. <laughs> Get some of the original stock, it'll be better than some of these stuff. Yeah, they got it. They have never been able to explain to me yet why everything's born with its clothes on except the human being. Everything is born in this world got clothes on except the human being. Why did we come with our home? Sure would save a lot of clothes, Bill. <laughs> Let that person prove that. Prove it if they can. And my friend, all of the evolution theory of all the things in proving an elevation hadn't helped the city, but men still continue to kill and murder and rape and lie and steal and cheat and swindle and beat. But now you watch it. We're going through some things terribly, so far we closer. I will watch it. Where, my friends, did the devil threat? In our educational system. Said, put the Bible out of the school. Stop putting in the school. Stop having devotions in school. Intellectual centers. As a result, my friends, they figured if they could educate a generation without God, they had it made. An educated generation without God in it is like that in the auction for the slaughter pen. After all, we're in three parts. Three joints, three parts of the eye, three parts of the brain, three parts of the body, fresh, blood, and gold, three parts of everything God ever created. We're physical. Spiritual and male. One third of your eyes go on, the other two thirds go good. One third of your body go on, the other two thirds go good. One third of your brain go on, the other two thirds go good. One third of your heart go on, the other two thirds go good. My friends, if they can raise the dead in the old city to get two thirds of man without the other third in him, he's got him defeated, destroyed, and divided. But our God, man's head is in the strong pins of sin. So as a result, they throw God's word out. They take God's book out of our schools. And on the heels of that, they put in physical air. And in your physical air classes, they're teaching sex. That's the main thing. 
about the physical edge that's taking place of the teaching of God's word, devotional parents. The educational system is pushed God out. Well, the devil's got the Bible out, he's got devotions out, he's got prayer out, and he's ready to take a generation without God. He knows he'll drag them to hell and slow them in the pits of sin. You see what he's been doing? He's here in America. The Beatles brought them over here, one over them on us. And we're in the midst of them. And as a result, educational systems of America, and you listen, some of it from West Virginia, we saw in the paper the terrible things he's trying to teach your sons and daughters, and they're trying to teach it in other places. There's some places in America now where they let the high school boys and girls go together naked for one kid so they won't wonder about each other. Yes, that's in America. And as we face it, my friends, you look at it. The devil is destroying this young generation. He's after them. Now watch. The educational system shoves it up. Now then, the recreational system in America is turned over to sex and flesh and to the hunky tonks and, and to the gay places of rock festivals, drinking, sexing, and all sorts of solid dope and all of that. Your recreational facility, facilities, my beloved, has been converted to the efforts of the satanic forces of America. We used to have some great drums and great plays for no longer a bunch of wild stuff to appeal to the flesh and to the low nature of humanity. Amen. That's right. Your recreational places are filled with that which appeals to the sex and the nakedness and the desires of the place of the generation of the day. Yeah. If they were got the recreational places, he's got the educational uh, this is not pushed out of that. Now then, he's in the literary world, great novels and great fictions. No longer popular. But a bunch of sentimental slush, untruth fiction, untruth novels, and showing forth the sex side, in a moral side, this literary world is becoming filled with philosophical books such books and all of that mess that will degenerate and degenerate and drive men from God and throw away seducing spirits and doctrines and devils. Then on the top of that, ladies and gentlemen, I had to realize something else. The educational system, the recreational system, the literary world, filling this country with a book of sex magazines and pornography, books and all of that stuff and single men novels and single men addiction of immorality and the purpose of it is to let the generation eat out our hearts like pastors would eat us up. So as a result, there it is. Then on the top of that, the artistic designing of America today, her gracious have ceased to produce great masterpieces. My friends, look at the art of the day. Look in your magazines. Look in your art places. What is to get sectionists? Forget God. Forget morals. There the majority, not all, but the majority of the pieces of art today in the thing in the world with them. And all this feet, Christianity and God. Just look at it. You say, down tell you something. Go and look at the present day art. The modern day art. What's it saying? Sex. Sex. No God. Physical. No God. Amen. And I think there it is. So as a result, he's got that. Now that regular educational, he hit the intellectual centers, and all of our religious institutions are teaching stuff of a seducing spirit and leading the religious leaders of spread. And our actual public education is so gone out, the literary world has pushed it out, and the artistic design of the world, and then the legislative bodies of America 
has been to Bobofine. The Lord God. No. I repeat. The majority, not all, thank God, but the majority of your legislative bodies in your state and mind, in your new United States, not a thing of word but a bunch of bread out of those bottles of the wind and face in corporate bread, men and grand drinking, they work in this line. The thing that Edwin Kennedy that they not in good with that poor innocent mother and trapped her in a baby and covered up. That's some of the legislative fighting. Now I want you to know, you say preacher, you better be careful. I am. I know who I am. I know most in the fog and I'm not Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know what a bunch of them doing. If you be honest, you know what to do. Now, if you're down in quiet, the war again. The devil got in and almost wrecked. The devil got control of the Supreme Court of the United States, and they let one law make them put the Bible and pray out of school. You know what she said? She never died satisfied. Till she seen Elder Baptist preach in America, hanging to a limb by the dust. They yeah. didn't quit preaching God. Well, they didn't hang me to a limb with my dust before I'll shut up. Hey. 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 That bunch of that got turned around and did away with capital punishment. As a result, human life is the cheapest thing. You can get it quicker for killing an old dog than you will a human life. <laughs> My friend, murder, murder, murder. Those law and law enforcing law officers never know whether they get back home when they go at the criminals in them. All that crowd, my friends, is moving in drought cities and in our countryside, threatening lives of innocent people, murdering families, and get what little they got, and they won't even get in jail. You say, oh, preacher, you say that, you say that the Bible teaches self appointment, it's for us. Now record when men did that wrong they died. My friends, we are twice in murder and rape and kidnapped in America. Life is dangerous. The devil's too far to the law enforcement office. They take somebody to turn key to the eternal room. Take somebody to rape and you go to the eternal room. You know what I'm talking about. Just like up there in Franklin County. That dirty bunch of criminals now trying to kill a chef. And the man went in to investigate, put a bomb in his house, tried to kill him and, his, and threatened to kill his wife and his children. And took the kids' rabbits out and pinned their ears on a clothesline. Said, we'll do you this way. That's demon infested America. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, ten years ago, they ain't going to got five of that. Yes. You know what I was talking about. That fuck that ever got the Supreme Court to legalize the crime syndicates of this country and to take away capital punishment to make life cheap so he can wreck this nation. He's out of us. And the legislative bodies and a lot of people are bringing for Brother Kennedy. I mean, listen. I, I know, like one preacher said here, yeah, one of them, Richard had his mistakes, but I'll tell you one thing. He saw a word and never tried to have much religious services at all. He had primaries. He wanted to write. My friends, he went in there with such a mess and inherent. And you listen, the Democrats is pushing and cussing. And I'm not shooting at the Democrats. I'm in the 
and shocking them. But here, listen to them. They wouldn't want a man they said, well, that's any old fair man in there. That's the reason they run who they run, and you would never be elected. They won't put a Republican, that's so they can put you. From, from Kennedy on down to Johnson, the thing got rotten and rotten, and they knew she's so rotten she's going to blow up, swell up and bust stone. And they didn't want one of their here. They wanted to bring it on somebody else like me and say it too. I'll tell you one thing, and I don't even let it. I'm just not saying I won't have uh, Nixon a letter. I said, if you'll come clean with everything and get on the radio and start a course in there, if you can produce the greatest revival this country has ever had. See how they're going to come out of it. I'm sufficient for that. I wish you would get right. And tell God I asked a whole bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> now, his friend, he was working over the state. And a lot of the folks in me and their folks that he can get in their necks. Shit! The devil went in our White House, our legislative halls. The devil moved in and he's wrecking our government. He's called the American who's covered it in our government. That evidence is about the colonism, but most of the stabilism. And you see it, my friends. You say, well, preacher, I won't preach like that. That's the reason God didn't call you. He wanted one better for the child. <laughs> you say, you wouldn't preach like that up there. Give me a chance. Lock them up, let me have them out and see what they hear. That's the wrong reason to say this other thing. The seducing spirits and the demons have moved in. Yeah. Look, they've got it on. Except one thing. And that's the New Testament church is going to put it in. Take 
Stop. You know, this is some little sort of a weekend. You know, this is old man. I've seen all these endless perfection movements. I've seen all these religious movements. I've seen them come and go and die in five and six and seven, not over ten years, you can't find none of their followers. Well, the church is still a preacher. I don't think I listen to the devil has come to get us. You hear? He's got us again. Soda. Sifty. The whole thing is a bunch of God fearing, God loving preachers and Christian people. And our New Testament church. He hasn't got it yet. But he's out. Listen, about a week passes now that we don't get letters here at the Camp Zion where that this year asks us to pray for church that are about to close the door. Some of them have been in existence a hundred years. Just recently, a lady less than a hundred miles here. She used to have a strong church for the church. Son, just a passion. She wrote and said, pray, our church is a dead, my children don't even want to go. But they had a preacher recently who preached it. Head would be full of the people's caves and cats and dogs. You just can't realize what's going on. They come into our church and the people come to worship and Satan came also. He's got everything else. And all he's got to do is get in our churches and shut us up. And God, he's got it. If he can get our churches, he's got us. The only thing the devil hasn't got is the New Testament churches that God can preachers and laymen and dear women of God that are standing. I say that's the only thing he hasn't got. But there's more confusion and division. And Scott and Jesus said in his word that where there's division and confusion and strife, that's deadly and earthly and sinful. So he done told us what it is. You've never had so much confusion and bickering and mention in your church in all your life, brethren. And the reason is the devil's coming in, trying to get us. You say the devil come in and get us? Yeah. He can. You say the devil can't get the Christians. He got baby. <laughs> he got Samson, didn't he? He's got a lot of other folks. He got the Peter David and stopped his foot and said he didn't even know them. Don't say he can't get him. My friends, I've seen it over and over. There was a man who came to this camp a few years ago and then he got off in this uh, religious move and got the talking tongues and did the sanctified and got the power that he could heal folks' as pain. Yeah. He had a tap that he could put coal in it or civil water do want. <laughs> and he, he didn't really go around healing people's sin. <laughs> but he's run out of America by getting messed up with a 16-year-old girl Leaping his wife. And I went to hold a meeting in, in the church that he left, and it was a Baptist church. He took off in that stuff. And while I was there, there's so many demons just like that hanging off the table. And as a result, one of the ladies confessed before the meeting's over. She'd had 56 or more relationships with him while he was back. So he told her she's full of Holy Ghost, he's full of Holy Ghost, and it wouldn't be sin for them to have a relationship. Two other women confessed the same thing. 
Man, when I got the preacher in court, word of God, one of the women come down the aisle with a big old hurt pale body. You know, one of these look like a family body. Man. Her husband sitting on the front seat. And I seen her come, I told her, well, I preach her. I said, she, she come down the aisle, walk around in front of her husband, that old hurt pale body, watching her the <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 